You're watching the Carolina Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals presented by My48. Conference play begins in North Carolina. The Southeast Guilford Falcons want to defend home turf against the number one team in the state, the Grimsley Whirlies, in pursuit of a state championship. Welcome to Bill Slayton Field with the former Catawba offensive lineman Mark Covert. I'm Evan Budgervich. This Grimsley offense led by the number one junior quarterback in the country, Faison Brandon. Mark, what makes his offense so dynamic? Well, you have to adjust sometimes when you get come into the game of football, right? You lose your top two targets to the collegiate ranks last year, going to Duke and NC State. So what does Faison Brandon do? He adjusts and he transitions. The numbers this year have not been as gaudy through the first three weeks of the season, but the record is there, the start is there, and Grimsley is poised for another terrific run. As Grimsley and Southeast Guilford begin league play, let's introduce you to the third member of our team Rebecca Russell. These two teams are very familiar with each other and both are coming off an open week, a week where weather impacted their practice schedule. But both teams are hungry for a win and begin what Daryl Brown, head coach for Grimsley, describes as a new season with conference play kicking off tonight. Records, they're out the window. And Coach Bates with Southeast Guilford says that it's going to come down to who can execute their game plan the best. Play fast, play physical, and have positive plays happen early. Thanks, Rebecca. This Southeast Guilford team not only looking to pull the upset, they want to stop a Grimsley club that's won 29 straight conference matchups. When we come back, starting lineups and kickoff. One of the best teams in the state kickstarts 4A league play when we come back. Here's our keys to the game tonight. Grimsley and Southeast Guild for Mark. How, how important is the offensive line for the Falcons? Well, it's not just the offensive line. It's on both fronts. The offensive and defensive line have to be explosive tonight. Bring that power that they need up front and not making the big mistake, avoiding the big turnover, not allowing the big play from Grimsley. Speaking of the Whirlies, they have to sustain those drives against an offense in Southeast Guilford that likes to run the ball and make them put the ball in the air a little bit. Make those Falcons fly and see if they can attack you with the passing game. Both teams scored 42 points a week ago. Big offensive outings coming off the bye week. And Mark, how about our players to watch coming in? This Grimsley club up by the best junior quarterback in the country. Faison Brandon, not only special, but growing here in year three. Yeah, absolutely growing and adjusting to what the offense has done. Touched a little bit on in the open. The numbers have not been there just from a pure volume standpoint, but he's been as good as advertised here in the early parts of the season. Of course, we can't talk about this offense for the Falcons of Southeast Guilford without talking about their stunning running back, McLaughlin. He is the guy that makes everything go. Big, strong, powerful glides when he runs across. So very strong. He's going to be paramount in their efforts here tonight. Tariq McLaughlin, the senior tailback, four yards to carry. And Southeast Guilford, it's been a minute here, but trying to 
take down Grimsley's one 29 straight in the conference. It's a juggernaut program that made it to the fourth round of state a year ago. But this is a Southeast team, Mark, that's played really well in the non-con. Good win over Southern Guilford and Lee County. And they return all their offensive pieces. That's what you need. You want to have that offensive continuity. It starts specifically up front when you have those five guys along your offensive line. That You want to have that unison moving all as one unit, as one body. The longer you play together, the more chemistry you build. Usually delivers on good results. 15th meeting in the modern history of these two. And now league foes just 20 minutes apart. Here just outside the heart of Greensboro tonight. Rain has subsided. Great looking field. And now Jackson Kinderman. True freshman to boot of the way. And this game is underway. This is returnable for Cayenne Battle who slips through one and battle out near the 30. That's where Faison Brandon gets started offensively. A near perfect game for Brandon last week, 13 of 13. Does not have the prolific receivers of Terrell Anderson and Alex Taylor, but found ways to move the football. And that's the key to the game for him right now. If you have 13 attempts and you complete all of those, you're doing something right. He's been sharp early on for the first three games of the season for Grimsley. 45 touchdowns last year for Brandon. Now in game four, here's a first and 10. Quickly, Mitchell Summers, the tailback. The senior cuts it up. Oh, Summers electric in a Southeast Territory. No one's going to catch him. One play touchdown. One of the most elusive tailbacks in the state. His 10th score. So much for not having that big playability here early on. Mitchell Summers is a rocket out of the backfield, and you saw it there. He got the blocking up front on the perimeter from his wideouts, delivers there, and then the straight line speed. You're not going to catch number 22 when he breaks into the open field like that. It's surprising not many Division I programs have offered this kid yet. Continues to ride over 70 career touchdowns. 77 now with that score from 75 yards. Not too bad of a start if you are Grimsley. And now a flag comes in. Our first look at Mark Eggleston Clark, our lead ref tonight. And actually, he picks up the flag. We asked, could Grimsley's offense be explosive? Well, 75 yards real quick. Pretty resounding answer. Here's Jackson Henry for the extra point, And a really good start for the number one team in the state. One play, 75 yards. So Faison Brandon now 14 of his last 14 yeah. back to last week. Well, keeps the streak alive. Just a nice, easy swing route. You need that blocking to set up on the outside. Help with a little bit of slippage by the defenders along there. Again, you alluded to the rain passing through here. So there's a field conditions. A little slick here to start. But when you get that blocking and you have enough space, it's going to be real hard to catch Mitchell Summers once he breaks into the open. It's just good execution up front. Summers carries an offense for Coach Daryl Brown, second in the state in scoring last year. And Daryl noted with this year's offense, yes, we don't have elite receivers like at NC State to do commit from a year ago, but we have more balance in 24. Yeah, and it's it'd be a shame or really a disservice to what they do to call it methodical, right? Because you think three yards and a cloud of dust, that's a more methodical offense, but they're steady. They work their way down the field with a combination of pass and run. Very efficient, not as explosive, despite what we just saw but it is a prolific offense nonetheless. Daryl Brown's club, state champ from two years ago, and they are knocking on the door. Already a win over top-ranked Roseville from the eastern side of the state. Now the first kickoff for the Whirlies. Southeast Guilford's opening touch from the five. Room here for Jermaine Harris, and he gets tripped up in the 15. So now if you're Xander Marsh, the senior quarterback, last week, very good move in the football, had an 80 QBR, a couple of touchdowns against Lee County. How does he continue that success today? Don't let the pressure get to you here early on. This is a big defensive front for Grimsley, so the offensive line has to give him enough time, survey the field, scan, and find his receivers. Four juniors, one senior on the offensive line. And Coach Earl Bates noted, we have our work cut out against us on the line this week. 
because there's big 6 1 3 15 Andre Hill 99 right at that nose tackle position here on first and 10. Marsh sends Isaac Pike the captain in motion first handoff and Tariq McLaughlin gets a yard or two a little different look by this offense of Southeast to start the game come out with some motion see if you can dress it up a little bit how this Grimsley defense reacts to it early on help you out game plan wise throughout the rest of this contest Southeast just over five yards of carry coming in it's McKinnon McLaughlin and Pike really a three-headed attack yeah. offensively it is and they're very good at running the football. All three of them can step in and make a play at any moment on the ground. This Grimsley defense has to be disciplined with their run defense here tonight. A spread look on second and eight. Here comes Kingston Davenport, a quick motion. Blitz coming. Nice escape. Marsh out of the pocket. Marsh, the first down. Elusive, beating Kyrie Milliner, the linebacker. That pressure got there on the second play, first drawback of the game. But give Marsh credit, senses it, bounces outside. And instead of trying to force something down the field, takes the safe play and gets those yards. You see the speed there along the edge as well, just beating out a couple of Grimsley defenders around the turn. Gain of 12 for the Crescent Ford first down. Right at the game in style with the F-150 from Crescent Ford of High Point. Or the motorcycles we saw pregame. We yeah. Southeast Guilford out of the tunnel. Took this by surprise, didn't it? Made for a unique atmosphere here in the heart of Southern Greensboro. From the 24, Marsh moving, pressure. Marsh heaves it out of the way, and three men all over him. Marsh has got to make quick decisions tonight, Mark. But that was a good decision on his part. You got to have that clock in your head letting you know, I've got to get this football away and not take the sack. Senses the pressure coming and throws that one out of bounds. And as if Ice Cube from the 90s, all I hear is Debo. That's yes. Ryan Debo with the blitz, <laughs> the safety. That was an underrated movie, by the way. It was a very underrated movie. Not to mention this Grimsley defense, which you talk to Joe Rigsby, the D coordinator. He says this is the strength of Grimsley. Not the 50 points a game, but the stout defense. Yep, especially up front. They got a front seven that can contend with anyone across the state of North Carolina. Now a second and long. Not much room for Tariq McLaughlin. So third and 10 upcoming. And that's the captain, Kyrie Milner, middle linebacker. Solid player, saw him sideline to sideline range here in the last couple weeks. You see him scream down to the hole this time. Meets McLaughlin right there to make that stop. Excellent job by his defensive line up front, and then by him to sniff that one out and put it to an end. Milner, third in tackles last year. Ja'Kai Eason, now playing FCS football, was the anchor of the 23 Grimsley defense. So now third and 10. Marsh has made things happen with his feet. Here's a blitz. Marsh backpedals, he's down. Bryce Davis, the Duke commit, his first sack. Only a matter of time. Figured he was gonna be showing up somewhere along the way. First drive on a key third down, gets through. Pressure just came from both sides. And that time, Marsh had nowhere to go with the football, just collapses under the pressure. And Bryce Davis is the beneficiary on the stat line. 11 TFLs for Davis in four games. Four star commit, clearly immense talent. A game wrecker. Here's Bryson Arendt with a low punt. Good field position for Grimsley. And 10 yards of carry, so right there at the 45. We'll take the timeout. Mitchell Summers off and running. Grimsley up a touchdown. It's a league opener here in Greensboro on my 48.
Close captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Caring Hands. Caring Hands Home Health, who understand the happiness of your loved ones is important to their wellness. How about the Caring Hands of Mitchell Summers? 75 yards in the blink of an eye. He's nearing 5,000 career yards. A senior tailback, and here's Grimsley up a touchdown. All 5'6", 160, but he is a dynamo in the backfield alongside on Brandon. Great field position on first down. It's play action. Slant route to Caden Coteau, and he dropped it. Otherwise, the touchdown looming there. Potentially, and it was at least a very big gain, over 20 yards, but you've got to look that football in. Maybe a case of being so wide open, you start getting your eyes upfield. And Caden Coteau, who is the best returning wide receiver amongst this group, just drops a gimme. Last year's tandem of Taylor and Anderson, both in the ACC now, 2,200 combined yards. This is huge shoes to fill for the junior, Caden Coteau. He asked Gerald Brown, though, and he said, this receiving core's grown so much, week one to week three. Mitchell Summers back on the ground, gets a block. Summers zigs, sideline. Summers speeds away inside the 30 and near the red zone. So there's where the 5-6 comes into play because he disappeared for a second. The defense can't locate him. And he shows off the balance along that Grimsley sideline. Can be a great shot here. Look at him, splits the defenders, and then boom, the spin, the balance, and then the burst up the sideline. If you're a college scout watching this running back, I know the size isn't elusive, but he makes a lot of plays. Instincts, man. It's instincts and ability. The size doesn't matter. If you can play ball, he will find you. Right outside the red zone, Brandon the pump fake. He goes deep, open man, overshot. Wanted Kyan Battle. Had the opening there, but a rare miss from Brandon. If Battle keeps running his route and doesn't stop to turn around, that's six. That time it's on Kion Battle. He's got to keep running that route downfield and then turn to make that catch, but he turned way too soon. See the defense gets sucked up there looking for the screen down below. Battle gets back behind them. You've got to continue your route through, and that's an easy touchdown. That's Adrian Gaylor, the starting safety in coverage. The defense that returns top five tacklers from a year ago under coordinator Keith Thompson. Here's second and ten. Back to Summers. Already has a touchdown. Summers wants two. He spins inside the ten. And now first and goal. Great job up front by that offensive line, sealing the edge. Summers did not get touched until he was about inside the 15, maybe the 10, to finally come down with that tackle. But this offensive line so far, they are doing a great job of holding up and moving bodies up front. Welcome to the Cook Reynolds red zone, running the smart way to get things done. Grimsley on the ground, 210 yards per game coming in. Now first and goal. It's a quick toss, battle, slips one. Pushes to the one. And now Grimsley, five different players have touched the ball. And that's what they do. This is what they've done for years. It's not just one guy. We can talk about Mitchell Summers and phase on Brandon until we're blue in the face here at the end of the night. But it's going to be Caden Coteau. It's going to be Kion Battle. These guys are going to get into the football game and make plays because they're given the opportunity to do so. Now second and goal. Here's Brandon. Feeds Summers. Summers is in, second touchdown of the night, 78th career score for the standout senior. Good tough run, a solid drive after the last one. One play on their first drive of the game. This one a little less explosive, just methodical down the field. A few, a few explosive plays, finishing it off with the man who started it all, Mitchell Summers. That's a 55-yard drive. The Oxner and Permar touchdown. We make wrongs right. A rare incompletion for Faison Brandon. He made it right real quick. Feed Mitchell Summers. And now Jackson Henry sneaks that one through. So it's 14-0 Grimsley. We'll take the timeout. Go Mitchell, go. A two-score night early for the great tailback.
14-0 early from Bill Slayton Athletic Field. And I talked with right tackle Nick Chubera for this week who told me, I love blocking for Mitchell Summers. He's a great guy. He takes the time to talk with us outside of football, and we all just really connect with him. When you're blocking for a guy like that who you enjoy talking with, it heightens your game. It helps me as a better player because I'm willing to lay it all on the line for a guy like that. Guys? Rebecca, great point. And this Grimsley staff saying Mitchell Summers is hungrier than ever before. Fresh off a trip to a region final, but came up short to the eventual champions, Weddington. And now a kickoff. Here's Southeast Guilford from the two. Harris slips one. And Harris dogpiled right around the 25. But we have a flag coming in late. Good return there for Southeast Guilford. Pretty scary, though, to think about a back who has almost 80 career touchdowns at the high school level is somehow hungrier than ever to do better. Off to a good start here tonight, though. That block in the back will move it 10 yards behind. If you're Southeast Guilford now, you've seen two touchdown drives. How do you stay in this game offensively on this drive? One of the keys really sustaining drives. I mean, that is one of the things that they have to do here tonight. Offensive line has to start creating some holes for these running backs to get through and pick up yards, taking some of the pressure off this passing game. Because right now, it's falling on Marsh to make plays through the air. Grimsley's had answers. Joe Rigsby's defense that has had big recruits in the past, including four-star Travis Shaw on the D-line two years ago. Yep. Here comes Andre Hill in this loaded defensive line again. Second stringer Jalen Anthony now comes in. Who's top five on the team at tackles as the second string. Right. D-tackle. <laughs> Here's the challenge for Xander Marsh in this offense working from the 11. Marsh brings movement. Here's McLaughlin. Tariq gets a nice chunk of change on first down. And if you're Earl Bates, he wants to play tough, he wants to play physical, that's a good run right there. It sure is, and a really nice jog by McLaughlin. Searching for room, being patient, and then bursting through. It wasn't a huge run, but it's enough. Five yards on first down, you'll take that every time. A five-year tenure here is head coach Earl Bates, whose son, Braylon, is a backup receiver. We'll see him tonight, number 21. It's a unique program here. 3A power in recent years, moving up to the highest level, 4A football. Yep. Big test. Another man in motion on second and medium. Quick pass, deflected. Whoa, Bryce Davis pops into your screen. Just great recognition up front by Bryce Davis. Saw the pass going out that way, the motion man goes. So naturally you want to flow that way, but you see how he flattens out a little bit. Instead of going straight into Marsh, he goes downfield a little bit more. Gets his hand on that football, it's a great play by Bryce Davis. He's fourth in the state sacks right now. Bryce Davis, Manny Diaz down at Duke. Very happy camper. Oh, he's gotta be licking his chops, man. Coming up next fall. Yeah. A Duke program, it's 3-0. One of the rare undefeated teams in the ACC. Hard-nosed hard team. Them and Cal. Did not have that on my bingo card. No. Nope. Defeated teams. In the ACC, no less. Here's third and five. Quick pass, and that one is Waiting for the ruling here, incomplete, so fourth down. Looking for Isaac Pike in the flat. Marsh had him there, just low balls that one and hits the turf right before it gets out there. It cannot have a play like that. Pike is wide open. Marsh just has to throw a great football here and that's one he's gonna want back. Yeah, that definitely bounced in. Second punt for Arndt, who's averaging 25 yards a boot this year. He's got the double gloves, too. You know, he's secure hands. Has to quickly get that one out. And a punt of 37 yards. We also tonight want to thank our folks watching live on YouTube and Facebook. Novant Health, best physicians, amazing nurses, remarkable care. Not just here in the triad, Mark, all over the country. We're worldwide now, baby. Now, that's a great movie reference. Ah. See Coach Earl Bates, who recently hurt his arm three weeks ago. He's making his way back with that brace. He's been a trooper out there for his program. Come back from a triceps injury. Does not lack the energy. He said, I want to play golf, but it's just so hard. <laughs> He'll get back out there 
here soon. It's hard for both of us, and we don't even have messed up arms yet. Here's Faison Brandon feeding Mitchell Summers. Summers gets 10 in the blink of an eye. Tackle there from the punter, Byron Arnett. Talking about what Mitchell Summers does, that size, a lot of people kind of dismiss, say, oh, he's a small football player. But he uses it to his advantage, where he's not going to be a big, bulky runner. He's able to misdirect and get guys off balance. That time just uses that small frame to sneak through a crack in that offensive line and pick up a solid game. And this is a state where small running backs have thrived. Think of Will Shipley. Yep. played at Weddington. He's yep. now on Clemson's program. Not the biggest, but one of the best touchdown scorers in the state. As Brandon evades pressure, summers the block. Now Brandon dances into the moonlight and gets 10. An easy first down run. 15, in fact. And going back to summers, his block here sets up that run. It sure did, and look right here. Brandon senses that pressure, gets away, and just enough. Summers gets just enough to free up the run that time by Faison Brandon. Now Shipley's in the NFL with the Eagles, yeah. moving his way up to the NFL level. There's multiple NFLers, including DJ Reader, playing for Grimsley right now. You watch a lot of these players at the high school level. They're ready for the big time. Here's Summers. Oh, huge hole! Mitchell Summers, a three touchdown quarter. Racking up the touchdowns tonight. Give him 12 on the season. That size, the speed combo, it is tough to beat. If you do not locate Mitchell Summers early in the play, it's going to get go from bad to worse. That time it does. He bursts through the hole, straight line speed to pull away from the defenders on full display. Mitchell Summers nearing 150 total yards in one of the first quarter. And the extra point makes it a three score game. This is a well oiled machine here, Grimsley offensively. What oiled machine's about as good as you can put it. They know how to score points, they do it in a multitude of different ways. And tonight, it's been what we've seen the last couple years, not so much this year so far. It's been explosive down the field with Mitchell Summers just knifing through that Falcons defense. I need Rebecca to ask about the multicolored cleats, but this dude can fly. Yeah, I mean, it's it's impressive. You see players of all different shapes and sizes at the high school level. That includes, like you said, some smaller running backs throughout the state, but they are able to get things done, especially here in the area. We've got seen some pretty powerful backs over the years and some speedy backs that haven't had the measurables. 25 touchdowns as a sophomore, 42 as a junior, and now 158 yards. And we're still in the first quarter. Barely halfway through the first quarter at that. Trifecta in touchdowns so far. Most rushing yards in a single season. Kevin Parks of West Rowan, 3,800. That's the magic number to beat this year. Yeah. Tough task. Tell you what, KP Parks was a special, special player. And an offense for him that was perfect. Just West Rowan, run the football. Give that option offense. And yep. He scored 60 touchdowns back in 09. Kit was a cooking. There's the boot from Elemental. There's a fumble on the return. This is scooped up. And a really nice return out past the 30. That's Lamel Bess and Rebecca Russell with more. With Coach Bates for Southeast Guilford, who told us the motto this year was live for another down. I was down here on the sidelines for Southeast Guilford with assistant coaches all yelling, don't let up. I know it's 21 nothing early, but as long as they can live for another down, that's the motto they're sticking with, don't let up. Thank you, Rebecca. Very true, especially early in conference, Mark. This is the toughest team Southeast will face all year. I don't think there's much argument about that. I mean, you can look down the schedule, and there's some good teams on there, but Grimsley's going to be the cream of the crop from what they play here on out. Northwest Guilford's had a really good start to conference play. Ragsdale undefeated in this 4A Metro. But here's Southeast Guilford on first and 10. A tunnel screen. There's a broken tackle. Hold on, big run into Grimsley territory. That's how you break things open, gain the 30. Flying by the seat of your pants on that one. Pressure almost got home, almost tackled it for no gain, but good resilience by this Falcons offense to get that football off. And if you are Marsh, come back the other way. Some misdirection in the screen game. And that, that great job getting upfield and picking up yards. My apologies, Mark. That's Lamel Bess, who had the great return. Now he gets 30 right there. He's doing all the offense here for Southeast. Sure is. He has them in plus territory now. Seventh catch of the year for Lamel. 
How can Xander Marsh capitalize on great field position? Another man in motion. And that time he moved too soon. Oh, the play continues with the flag down. And then another flag. This might be offsetting penalties. I'm curious what the pre-snap penalty is. Let's see what Mark Eggleston Clark has to say. Wow, so the Davis penalty offsets everything. There you go. Would have probably taken that one, but it looked awful close. He looked like he had his hand up near the face mask area. And certainly by the way that Marsh went down to the turf, it would certainly indicate that he did have a good hold of that face mask. A rare penalty for Grimsley. So we'll redo it first and 10 here. Southeast scored 42 points against Lee County on the road in their last game. Marsh dial up. Pressure. Marsh steps through it. Escapes. Look at Marsh zigging and zagging for five yards. That's an elusive quarterback. I don't know that I've ever seen a player juke and stay on the same path the entire play down the field. But what an effort that time by Marsh. Look at this. Just steps up. Again, pocket collapses. You get up field and then just juking back and forth, zigging his way up the field. They say in basketball, in your bag. Yeah. Well, he found his bag, and yeah. he's taking it with him. Hey, don't, don't get it wrong. Don't get it twisted. They, they're, the bag is here on the gridiron. Xander Marsh, who last week, Earl Bates told us, he's getting better at managing the offense. Tonight, Mark, he's got to be a playman. He sure does, and he's feeling the pressure right now. He's got a good sense of where it's coming from. He's navigating it. Just got to start making plays. Now second and five. Marsh feeds it. There's a good run, and right at the sticks, just a yard short. Third down upcoming. That's Ian McKinnon. And squeezing through, fighting for those yards, and then falling forward. You can get an extra yard or two at the end of every run just by falling forward. You're helping yourself out that way. You see the handshake there between running back and QB after the play. Great camaraderie. As McKinnon moves in motion on third and short. Quick toss. Nearly picked. Great catch. First down and more. Huge hole for Isaac Pike nearing the red zone. And I love the ingenuity of Earl Bates' offense. Elijah Ingram, the corner had him dead to rights, just takes a poor angle coming up the field. It was red. Had it right there, but Pike catches the football, gets up field, breaks the tackle, and continues to churn out yards. Pike came in only 23 yards all year. He matches that with even more on this play. Entering the Cook Reynolds red zone. Against an opponent like this, you need everybody to contribute. Isaiah Pike is certainly doing his part on this drive. Lamel Bess had started it. And a timeout, Southeast Guilford. How about six different players touching the football? And if you're Old Bates, you're finding ways in the last two drives to make things happen. Again, you've got to get this defense off balance, spread them out a little bit. And even on that last play, they read it, and it was there, but they don't make the play, and that's the only defender out there on the edge. So Pike has room to work with after that point. If you're going to beat Grimsley, you've got to get yourself in one-on-one -on -one matchups along the outside, spread this defense out, open it up a little bit. 15 yards officially for Pike on that one. And Earl Bates, a constant teacher. Mark, you talk to these coaches across the state. Earl's both down to earth and disciplined all at the same time. I love how he approaches this program. And you can tell that he's very honest about what he's trying to do, how he goes about his business as a coach, as a person. Just a true leader in every sense of the word. And they're going to need it. Again, as they make this transition up a level from 3A to 4A, it's a, it's a transition. For a lot of teams that go from those levels up and up, the biggest jump might be from 3 to 4. Just moved up two years ago right. after winning a league title yep. in 21. So he's certainly a guy that you would want navigating that ship as you continue to build to towards the future. Now in the highest level of football against the number one team in the state, here's Andrew Marsh outside the red zone. Four-man rush. Marsh goes short, incomplete. Through the hands of Pike. How do you capitalize on this field position if you're Southeast Guild? Well, it's a little bit of a tough play there. As Marsh comes out here and you're going out to the outside, you got to make sure you get good hold of that football. 
to make that play, but you've got to continue to find ways to get this defense off guard. Again, if you can get those one-on-one -on -one matchups, that's going to help. Right here at the bottom of your screen, you've got three wide receivers. There's only two guys lined up on them. Now second and ten. Marsh, the empty set. Here comes the blitz. Marsh picks it up. He sprints. Marsh a first down and rocked right at the sticks. Let's see if they give it to him. Oh, they don't. Rule the yard short. Solid effort, though. Feels the pressure again. Bryce Davis bringing it off the right side of that offensive line. Steps away, gets upfield, makes a smart play. And right now, Southeast Guilford is breaking some of these tackles. I mean, they're taking advantage of getting those extra yards after contact. Biggest third down of the game for Southeast Guilford. The Falcons changing the call before the snap. Play clock down to four. Marsh has to go. He does. Quick toss. Complete. Bess. Broken tackle. First and goal. Great third down play. Great third down play, great execution. That quick passing game brings that defensive line out of the game to a certain point. You see here, just get it out. They can't get pressure if that football is already out and away. Good blocking up the field, and Bess pick up the first down and a little bit more. The tackle there by Chris Young and into the Cook Reynolds red zone. This could literally be the game. Southeast Guilford needs this touchdown. Yes. Tariq McLaughlin back in a tailback. Marsh, first and goal. Blitz. Heaves. Out of bounds. Good awareness from the quarterback. And the senior fights for second and goal. Throwing the football away does not hurt. You don't pick up yards, but you're not taking a sack and falling, getting yourself back behind the line here. Breaks out of one sack attempt and then smartly gets that football way out of bounds. Live to play another down. We have an official timeout. And it looks like one of the Grimsley D linemen is slow to get up. He's getting treated by the athletic training staff tonight. Now he's back on his feet, so good news. That's Bakari Colberry, who's had a really good start at the senior D lineman, 15 tackles. Looks like he's going to be OK. A little shaken up. Turf is pretty slick so far, though. And a humid day, a lot yeah. of rain yep. in the morning. A surprisingly warmer day for the most part than we've had here the last couple of weeks. Nobody's as hot as Mitchell Summers right now, 158 uh -huh. yards in the first quarter. But he's been the man sitting on the bench, the Southeast marching down the field on this 70 yard drive. It's been a really impressive drive so far, but you've got to capitalize here. You got the ball to start at the 30, you've got to punch it in here bring this game back down to two scores. Now second and goal. Marsh, quarterback keeper. Marsh cuts. He's keeps moving. Oh, he's in. A recovered fumble touchdown. Looks like Isaac Pike has the Oxner and Permar touchdown. Well, they were certainly waiting to call this one. Certainly seemed like Xander Marsh juked his way into the end zone, but right before he got there, that football came out. And if that's the case, Isaac Pike, great awareness to hop on top of that one. And no instant replay in high school, so right. this call stands. Extra point here from Kinderman, the true freshman. Oh, he's ready for the moment. That's good. We got a ball game. Final minute, first quarter, and a 70-yard drive. Sets up Southeast Guilford, Mark. Xander Marsh just taking it here. Gets to the cusp of the end zone. Puts it up. And Isaac Pike hops right on top of it. Oh, Southeast right Guilford. place, right time. Have to capitalize. In those big time moments, who's going to get those gimme plays? And right he won now. the tug of war matchup yeah. with Caden Coteau. Yep. Now that's a Carolina Classic Fairy game. Great right awareness that time by Pike. How about Isaac Pike with the touchdown? His dad's in the press box with us tonight. That's not the high school football. I don't know what is. <laughs> Everybody getting involved. 
Because if that ball gets scooped the other way, game over. Right, you're down 21 nothing. You lose the football in the end zone. I, I don't see Southeast coming back. No, no, and it's that would have been a, a massive gut punch, a massive blow to this Southeast Guilford team so far. But right place at the right time. That's Isaac Pike. We know how electric Grimsley is. Can they score here in a minute and a half? So here, here's the next point, right? We still have another three quarters to go, and Grimsley is three for three on their touchdown drives. Kinderman to boot of the way. Better kick. Battle the return. Battle's got a wall. And Battle out past the 40. Good field position here for Grimsley. The tackle from Morris James, the junior. It's almost interesting. It almost looked like Battle started outrunning his blockers down the field. He was directing and then diving through yeah, traffic. Yeah, exactly. That's like me on Black Friday getting shopping at midnight oh, on the geez. Friday morning. I God. see those doors open up and I go straight through. God bless you for going Black Friday shopping, I'll tell you that much. Faison Brandon back to work from his 41. Four-man rush, short pass, there's a completion. Ooh, truck stick <laughs> and a near first down. That was a big catch and run there for DJ Howerton, the tight end. How are you doing tonight? Mr. DJ, run it back. That was a play right there. Good solid catch over the middle, and then the truck stick on the back end. Howerton fills the shoes of All-State tight end Lawson Albright, who was a state champ two years ago. Yep. Howerton with his fifth catch of the year. Second and three. Brandon with time. Shows off the arm and a flag. Pass interference. Coteau testing Kingston Davenport. I'm not sure that that football would have been caught, but it also doesn't matter at this level. Remember, the high school level, not a spot foul. Yep. So if you are going to commit that, only 15. Yep. So I'd rather give up that than a touchdown. A little too physical down the field. Uh, yeah, right there. Yeah, that grab of the chest and the face mask yep. there. And it was completely unnecessary. I mean, that ball is about 10 yards overthrown. No need to make that penalty. That's a sophomore guarding one of the better receiving cores in the state. Now fresh set of downs. There goes Micah Williams, the backup tailback, and he gets nine. 27th rush of the year for the junior. She thought it was bad enough when Mitchell Summers was on the field and you think, oh, the backup's in, we got some time to relax. Not really. Michael Williams might be just as good here in the next year or so as what Mitchell Summers is right there, just knifing through the defense again. No rest for the weary. Back to second and short. Brandon, quick toss. Good catch. Patrick Carter, and Carter shoved out. Mark, that's the eighth player to touch the ball for Grimsley as we had the first quarter. Spreading it out, sharing the love, going around to everybody. They all contribute the first quarter, and what a first quarter it was for the Warriors. Or not. Clock will start done. once ball's in play. Not the best throw, but credit to go back and get that one by Patrick Carter. Just snared it out of the air and got upfield. Must have rolled him out of bounds, so the clock stops. One final play for Grimsley here in the first quarter. Brandon from the 21. Pump fake. Brandon runs. Gets outside. Brandon stiff arm. End zone chase. He's just short out of bounds. Inside the five. And that's where Grimsley sets up when we begin the second quarter. Man, if he came for offense, he came by the right place. My 48, four scores in seven years ago. Faison Brandon putting on a show here for our Carolina Classic Fair Game of the Week.
Here's tonight's winning row, the Carolina Classic Fair winning row. You get free tickets October 4th through the 13th. Carolina Classic Fair, 10 days of awesome. And tickets are available now. Great night here at Southeast Guilford High School. Grimsley in the red zone. Quick toss to Coteau. Caden gets outside and is spun down nicely. A loss of one on the play. That's a nice stop by that defense up front. The Falcons read that one perfectly, strung that run out. And Coteau was not able to get those shoulders square outfield and just pick up a yard. Excellent job at their doorstep by Southeast Guilford. In the Cook Reynolds red zone to begin this second quarter. Three drives, three scores for Grimsley. New tailback, Michael Williams back in. Brandon from the four, keeps it. Brandon sprints in. Fourth score for Grimsley. The layup at the end, too, that's a lovely drive and response. Still with a mass of bodies around him, no less. Good response by Grimsley. See those Falcons go down the field and score on a long drive. What do you do? You take care of business, put another one on the board. Now four for four on touchdowns tonight. That's an Oxner and Permar touchdown. We make wrongs right. To our knowledge, Brand is not a, a basketball player, but he knows how to well, dribble and make some moves. It was good. Let's play both. It was a little bit of finger roll right there. His up ball bends left and misses, so it's 27-7. Speaking of Grimsley offense, Rebecca Russell with more. Well, guys, the reason why Brandon is able to be so good at his job is the guys around him. And Mark, I know you like this answer. This year's O-line has really been helpful for this team. And I asked O-lineman Nick Cachivero this week, what makes the O-line so good this year? And he said, just being able to keep the intensity and trusting each other to do the right thing. Also, being able to connect off the field helps us on the field. We have confidence in each other so we can focus on our own jobs and not worry about what the next guy is doing. Mark? This offensive line, Mark, they've been really impressive. And who said that no one cares about the offensive line? Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's two for two on Rebecca Russell hits on the offensive line here on Friday Night Rivals. So we love that up here in the booth. Well, we've had our quota for the night. Thank you for joining us here. I'm on 48 <laughs> television and across the triad with our live stream on Facebook and YouTube. But to her point, that offensive line has to be good for him to succeed, for Mitchell Summers to succeed, for these receivers to succeed, everyone. It starts with the five guys up front, and they have been a very solid group here for the first three weeks of the season and now going into the fourth. Here's the kick for Chase. Cole Mantle, the sophomore. He's the kickoff and field goal specialist. And Cole Mantle's got a boot. That dies at the one. Whoa. Oh, like a dead duck. Room to return and tackled at the five. No chance for the return game. And what a kick for Cole Mantle. Have you ever seen anything like that? I mean, we knew the field was a little damp. They said it rained pretty good here. Well before the game, but for a ball to just die like that on the turf? Can I get that with my pitching iron? No. No one hits. Look at that. <laughs> it just dies. That's unreal. And then the poor return guy, Lamel Best, who's had a really good night. He's like, oh, boy, I got to get something here. Right. And he gets to the five. And one of those plays, you can use that actually to your advantage. If he picks that football up and he has one foot in the end zone, it's a touchback. You get the ball out of the 20. The old Phil Mickelson loft shot. I'm telling you. Good kick there for the sophomore. Here's Xander Marsh from his five-yard line. Bryce Davis waiting with that pressure. There's a spin for McLaughlin, and he's knocked down. A loss of one on the carry. This defensive line, Mark, how did they make an impact tonight? Well, they've been everywhere so far. They've been bring, bringing guys off the edge, but a large amount of the damage that they've done defensively has been from those four guys up front. They're making plays, putting pressure on the Southeast Guilford offense. And they're succeeding. Outside of the one drive that they had last time they were out, they stymied what they wanted to do so far. Grimsley's defensive line, 40 tackles for loss in four games. One of the best teams in the state. The Bryce Davis commit to do clearly a part of it, but this whole D-line is causing havoc. I mean, they are game wreckers up front across the board. Now it's second and 11. Marsh with a four-man rush. Marsh. Davis hits him, loose ball, and caught by the coaching staff. How did 
Xander Marsh get that football away. I mean, he got sandwiched in midair. The Milner Davis special. There's Milner, the middle linebacker. I mean, that was unbelievable. Just the strength to get that football away. All that pressure around him, he just jumps up in the air and gets blindsided by Bryce Davis and still gets that one away. Now that's been the offense for Southeast. Man. Marsh moving and grooving through traffic. But they're not taking losses, and that's giving them a chance to fight for another down, right? Easier said than done on third and 11. Marsh wants a screen. It's a safety. That defensive line has been everywhere. And one of the backup D linemen, Fort High Helgo, a team leader as a senior with the sack. Former running back, so he's got the speed to get off on the edge, and this time he cashes in, just slicing through the double team. No communication up front. You've got to stay on that double team a little longer. Just a little longer. Because they have the screen set up right there. So Ford High Helga, you mentioned the punting story, Mark. This was a kid who had played. He was a scout team guy for three years. And you talk to his coaching staff and say, who's the guy that we got to talk about? It's Fort High Helga with his first career safety. Well, and you can see it right there. He has the motor right there, the good recognition. If you're not going to get doubled, get up the field and make a play. So 29 to 7. Let's dive into the starting lineups offensively. They've been moving the ball so quick. We haven't had a chance to touch on those, Mark. And for Grimsley, our mountain fried chicken starting lineup. Winston Salem's original fried chicken that's not greasy. I mean, Mitchell Summers is a story, but tonight that offensive line led by Nick Kashabura causing problems. Oh, they're, they're, they're eating up front right now. Those five guys are getting after it, moving bodies, and making their way down the field. It's a solid effort from that offensive line so far. You don't get to too many games in the second quarter. You have a breather to get the no. uh, starting lineup in. That's how fast <laughs> they've been scoring tonight. Foot and has been on the gas pedal since we started, and it has not let up. Because of the safety, this is a punting situation. Brian Arendt, the punter. Mitchell Summers bobbles at the 40, and it goes out of bounds. It's a good field position for Grimsley. Now, pardon me, that's not Mitchell Summers. That's number... 23, Makai Yawn, the backup tailback. There's Mitchell Summers back in there. Hard to find a 5-6, but he's been hard to tackle, too. Well, hard to find's probably been exactly what Southeast Guilford's been going through tonight. Trying to sift through that big offensive line in front of him and find him in that body. But those bodies is, is as tough as it is. He's making plays. Fresh set of downs for Grimsley. Here's a play action. The Tennessee commit lets it fly, finds Carter, and Patrick in the Southeast Territory. That's the next level of his game that we'll see at the college level at Tennessee. Just understanding your route concepts, where those holes are, and take those easy throws down the field. Just look, drops back, goes out to the far side, then comes back towards the middle of the field, finds Patrick Carter for another easy pitch and catch. If you're Josh Heupel in Rocky Top, you have to love both the running ability, but then the vision for this quarterback. Yeah, I mean, he's had it all, it's been on display. Goes to the air again. Perfect ball and a first down catch. That time, Caden Coteau, the top receiver. Another easy one that time. A little RPO action for you. Realizing that defense is being sucked up into the middle. And Tennessee's offense, the highest scoring team in the country right now. Yeah. The SEC with five in the top seven overall. And, and there's Tennessee needing a quarterback next year. Yeah. In two years, here comes Faison Brandon. Yeah. So connecting the dots as Brandon throws another screen. Coteau 1v1, and he wins the battle. Good tackle in open space after a gain of seven. Kingston Davenport there with a little tussle. Both teams getting out of that square mission. A flag now down. There's many things that we talked about that we we're impressed with with Grimsley so far. They're blocking by their wide receivers, not even just the offensive line, but on the edge by these wide receivers so far has been outstanding. Even on that play, Hudson Cooper was in the slot, laid a nice block down to help that play get further down the field for Coteau. Mark Eggleston clearing things up. That's 
Caleb Jackson committing the penalty. Tonight's game is also brought to you on our live stream, YouTube and Facebook. Novant Health, best physicians, amazing nurses, remarkable care. Novant Health is very valuable to a lot of these high schools, too, with extra athletic trainers and staff around to help support. All very good at their jobs as well. Just like our technical team here at my 48, real smart folks. One of the most prolific offenses in the state continues to move the football fresh off a of safety. Brandon from the 12 is a toss. Summers cuts it back. Oh, no way. Dragging his feet. Summers is just short to the two, nearly a fourth touchdown. He got tackled at the 10 and then slipped all the way to the two. Tackled at the 10. That's a great way to put it. He did. But just kept driving those legs. We see it almost every single week so far. These running backs know how to pick up yards after contact, just drag a couple defenders down. 6.5 yards a carry for Mitchell. And tonight, he's already over 175 yards. Crazy. He's in line. You got to think down here, he's still going to get at least one, maybe two more touches. Here's Summers back to it. Give him four touchdowns tonight. The Mitchell Summers party here in Southeast Guilford. He's getting his own line involved. He's dominating on the drive, a 60 yard score. I think he's online for that one because he could have walked it in. Good hole open up on the right side. Not off bodies in play that time for Southeast Guilford to cover. And Mitchell Summers delivers for not the first, not the second, not the third, but the fourth time in the first half. Summers had a six touchdown game last year against Rollsville, top 10 team in the state. That's his career best. But wait, before the kick here, a whistle, and a false start. That might be good news here for Jackson Henry, who's missed two straight kicks. It's been about the only thing that has not gone right for Grimsley so far. Make this more like an NFL extra point. 25-yard yeah. kick for Jackson, the senior. Toe, good hold, and that one is perfect. How about that? Move it back, no problem. All again. We'll take the timeout. Mitchell Summers putting on a show here in this first half. We'll continue the second quarter when we come back. Close captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Caring Hands. Caring Hands Home Health, who make their best to make your loved ones feel like they're being taken care of by family. Mitchell Summers taking care of the offense for Grimsley. 169 yards tonight. We're just nearing halftime. This is the start of 4A Metro Football League play. A league where Grimsley has won going on 30 straight in conference. And here's number 30, Chase Homental, who just put out a pitching wedge on his last kick. Sends the driver and clears it out of play for the touchback. Yeah, nothing that time. He didn't have a heavy bag, but he brings enough clubs to get the job done. And that's all you need. You ever Bring played that golf where you have to run and hit the ball live? Like yeah. you can't stop. That's terrible. That's terrible. I've seen people try to do that. As a former offensive lineman, absolutely not. Speaking of doing things really fast, Grimsley's defense right back on the field again. This is our mountain fried chicken starting defensive lineup. 
Milner, the returning captain at linebacker. And we saw Debo earlier, really aggressive corner slash safety. Yeah. An aggressive defense likes to get downhill, force pressure. They can attack you in a multitude of different ways. D coordinator Joe Rigsby real high on Koski Barnes as well, first year starter. All four starters gone from the secondary a year ago. As a defense, they picked off 35 passes last year. And here's Tariq McLaughlin on the ground. He gets two. That's a astonishing number. I think we talk about picking off 35 passes in a year. 36 total turnovers. I mean, not, and that's all with only one fumble. I mean, 35 passes. You had ball hawks everywhere. When you're up a lot, teams are throwing the ball. They have to put the ball in the air, but even then, I mean, you're up so far that you get far enough ahead, you start putting backups in, that means they're still contributing in that way. Just four picks for this year's defense, but still making things happen. Wins over top 25 Reagan, top 25 Rollsville in the state. Now it's second down. Marsh pump fakes. Pocket collapses and another sack. That's a loss of two. A combination there of Fort High Helgo on the sack. And he gets help from Dylan Pruitt. It's right there again. High Helgo, that pressure there gets home again. That's the second sack of the night. At the safety just a little while ago, he's wrecking some havoc. He was Mitchell Summers' backup last year running back. Now he has a safety and another sack tonight. Get on the field in high school if you can succeed in more than one area. I hell goes doing it. And his first touchdown of his career last year was in a My 48 TV game. The kid knows how to play for television. <laughs> Here's some pressure on Marsh. Takes his time. Good. Oh, incomplete. Wanted Eric Gladney, the senior receiver. That would have been a first down. And Rebecca, let's keep this Fort High Helgo party rolling. Absolutely. Well, I asked Bryce Davis about Fort High Helgo, and even, even over the phone, you could tell he had a big smile on his face. He said, that's my guy. He's a dog. He's been performing since his freshman year in practice, but it's finally coming to light on the field on Friday nights. He's worked his butt off to get to this position. Bryce admitted there's not a lot of guys that can play D-tackle at 195, 200 pounds, so that speaks volumes for what Fort's been doing right now. And the biggest challenge going from running back to defensive tackle, Bryce told me for Fort, is that Fort now has to take on double teams instead of simply just running the ball. It's different in the trenches, Bryce said, but Fort has the right mindset and doesn't back down from any challenges and faces adversity well. Back in those white tops, he's like a Siberian Husky out there. Sure is. That he's safety, a dog. Zach, the dog's making plays. He's a dog down there. And Grimsley gets the football back here midway through the second quarter. But it is it is interesting. It speaks to the developmental process that this coaching staff has, right? Like you don't just see a player as just a running back and you, you just go from there, right? It has a sizable roster being at the 4A level, but if you can get guys that can make those commitments to transition to other positions, that's huge. And especially if they excel, Fort High Helgo is doing that right now. Faison Brandon, seven completions tonight, leading four touchdown drives. Has time, wants a fifth score, deep shot incomplete. And he wanted Patrick Carter, good coverage by Adrian Gaylord. That was a dot down the field. Faison Brandon put that thing on it. Just look right down the field, right over. That is a beautiful pass, a difficult catch to make over the top, not even over the shoulder, but over your head. Almost, Patrick Carter, he'd love to come down with that football, but that is an excellent throw from Faison Brandon. Brandon, two incompletions, but that one was really good, just off the hands. And we have a whistle here, movement from Grimsley. Or maybe movement from Southeast, let's see. Wow, the Falcons encroached. Can't give away free yards to a dynamic offense. No, and you understand the need to want to get off the football and initiate that contact along that defensive line, but you've got to be able to hold your water just long enough and wait for that ball to get snapped. Grimsley scored 56 when these teams met last year. It's been another offensive night. But give Southeast credit, really good touchdown drive in the second quarter. Here's the backup tailback, Michael Williams. He gets spun down by Ian McKinnon, the senior middle linebacker. Seemed like it was going to be a little iffy at first. Williams tried searching for room. It was taking a long time for him to find anything, but finds just enough daylight. 
gets a solid gain on second down. McKinnon has the most snaps of any of a Turner on this defense. A three-year starter. You have to love those type of stories. Most kids can't drive at 16. <laughs> He's running the defense as a sophomore and now as a senior. Solid leader along that defense. Five minutes left in the half. And not much room as Williams gets slowed up. Just short of the stick, so it's fourth down. Awful close. You'd like to think on the 31 going in, Grimsley's going to keep their offense on the field here and go for this one. Sure looks like they are. Williams says, I don't need the gloves here on fourth down. This is a run the football kind of play. Yeah. A wet day here in Greensboro, southern Greensboro. Here's fourth and short. Did Southeast jump? They did. And there's the penalty man, Landon McMillan. Giving up free yards. Stay tuned for the U.S. Army halftime report. We'll have this week's Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athletes, interviews with the coaches, principals, and more, and a fresh new pretzel stacking contest. Ooh. We have a fresh pretzel sponsor to talk about later. Yeah. U.S. Army, be all that you can be. But I'm told not to eat the pretzels. That took a very different meaning this year than it did last year. As Crimsley on the edge of the State Fair feeds Micah Williams. Williams cuts out a one and gets to the 15. Doesn't matter who's in at tailback. This has been a dominant rushing night. Over 200 yards on the ground. Well, it's been a one-two combo. And it's almost like they're carbon copies of each other between Summers and Williams, right? About the same size. 5'6 to 5'7 you go from Summers to Mitchell. Or excuse me, Summers to Williams. So guys that are very similar in shape. Quick toss to Coteau. And Caden will get two yards. He's dragged out by a Joshua Williams hat. You go from Summers to fall next week. First week of fall coming up. Beautiful time. How early do you put your pumpkins out in front of the house? I'm a little surprised that we haven't yet. Spoiler alert, we have. I'm not surprised by that. I'm, I am stunned that, that there are no pumpkins around my house just yet. We'll have to go to the Colbert household next week, check in before our Friday Night Rivals game of the week with Reagan and Glenn. Uh, trust me, I'm sure I'm sure future Mrs. Colbert has heard you, and uh, she'll be pulling out the stuff by the time I get home. Hello to all the families watching tonight as Cato gets a shovel toss. Caden stretches outside. Great pursuit. And Bryson, or sorry, Byron Arnett, they're on the stop. He forced that play outside. Sure did. And that's what you got to do if you're going to have those jet sweeps come across. How do you limit them? You keep stringing it out and keep forcing that jet man to keep going to the sideline. If you don't allow them to turn their shoulders upfield, it's going to negate any real impact the play has. Excellent job defensively by Southeast Guilford. Grimsley scored on every drive and a safety tonight. So now third and, let's say, 13. Brandon, with all the time in the world, intercepted! Wow, jumping in front, Adrian Gaylord. And Gaylord's got a chance. Oh, Gaylord stays up, end of the 25. The pick for A.J. Gaylord. How about that? Lulled it to sleep. Grimsley thought they had an easy pitch and catch over the middle that time, but A.J. Gaylord swoops in and makes that pick. What anticipation baiting it, watching the eyes of Faison Brandon down the field. How about that? Howerton had a touchdown until Gaylord came in. Absolutely. Just watch the play the entire way, reads it, and makes the play. That is textbook on the back end if you are A.J. Gaylord. Second pick for A.J. I think he got hit really hard at the end of that play. But a trainer's coming out. Defense finally made a stand, though. Two and a half minutes. Can Southeast put on a nice drive before half? Marsh, four-man rush. Marsh pressured. Marsh throws a prayer out of bounds. Caught by his running mates, Ryan Devo, out of play. Just making the right play, that pressure forces you out of the pocket. Nothing develops down the field. Don't force one into coverage. 
Toss that out of bounds. And we saw on the touchdown drive, Earl Bates gave options for Marsh yeah. when that blitz got there. Yeah, I mean, he's certainly not afraid to take off when need be, but he's keeping those eyes downfield as long as he can. He's trying to find those guys if they're able to find some clearance in that secondary. Sounds of the cheerleaders here at Southeast. The Falcon folks are excited tonight. First TV game here in a couple of years. There's a flag. And that gets out of bounds. This might be coming back. Two flags, in fact. Most likely a hold. That's the challenge of blocking this elite defensive line. It sure is, and they're bringing pressure, but it's not with a lot of bodies. I mean, they're just winning at the point of attack, those one-on-one -on -one matchups. They're getting into the backfield. They're forcing Marsh out of the pocket, forcing him to step up. Doesn't allow him to keep his eyes down the field as long as he would like to. Here's the Mountain Fried Chicken starting lineup for Southeast Guilford now. The key story in this game has been Alex Marsh making plays, Xander Marsh making plays. Yeah. I mean, he's been smart with the football, taking a couple sacks, but against Grimsley, you can't do that much. Quarterback run and just a yard. So now it's third and long. Just another stagnant drive. And we knew coming into this one, this defensive line was going to be pretty hard in here. Not a two minute timeout, but a timeout called under two minutes. Nice. Grimsley defense. They've been pretty good, right? I mean, even when we saw them come out, it's it's different when you see teams walk out on the field. I think all of us kind of looked out when Gripsy walked out, like, man, these guys have some size. And they they put the skill behind it. They've got the size, they've got the technique. That's why they are one of the premier programs in the state. Last three years, Grimsley 52 and 3. One of those losses in a state final. Otherwise, it's been a really tough program to slow down. From the players executing to the coaches getting them prepared throughout the week. It's just a well run program. And I think if you're trying to get to that level, you have to start looking at the success that they've had over the years and think how can we maybe not necessarily make a copy of that, but what can we take away from them that we can use in our own program? Certainly, discipline, scheme. A Grimsley team that five years ago was six and five, Mark. This, this was not a program at that level. No. But in the last five years, a championship in 20, they've lost just one game a year since, setting the standard now in Greensboro. And rolling tonight, up 29, late in the second quarter. Here's Andrew Marsh on third and 19. Quick toss. Bess. Goes nowhere and good pursuit. The secondary with Koski Barnes, all new starters, but they're making a ton of plays. No, they sure are. They're getting up to the football. That pressure, they're flying around the line of scrimmage. They're not allowing these passes. You see these DBs don't drop back. They're not backpedaling down the field. They are flat-footed and watching for this quick passing game now and trying to drive on that football. A timeout here for Grimsley. And Mark, I, I see what Grimsley's doing. They're, they're emulating a two-minute drill in the first half. Yeah. Now you call a timeout. Still have the two remaining here in the half. And with an offense that can certainly move the ball at will, has the pieces to get it up and down the field. They have certainly enough time with the two timeouts left to make something happen on this drive before halftime. Start a conference play all across the state. Some really good games. Your top 10 teams in the state, Mount Tabor, West Forsyth battling. Mount Tabor up two scores at halftime. We'll see Snook Peter get a crew in a couple of weeks when they play East Forsyth. Kind of thought that'd be a pretty fun one to, to be a part of as well, right? Two hard-nosed football teams, smash mouth football. Northern Guilford off to a good start up a touchdown on Ragsdale nearing halftime. That's part of this same conference. Is Looks like we have some folks treating with the medical unit. Hopefully everyone's okay with the ambulance. Here's a punt. And as that punt dies, we'll take a timeout. When we, when we come back, 
final 90 seconds of this first half with Grimsley rolling here on my 48. Stay tuned for the U.S. Army Halftime Report. We'll have this week's Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athletes, interviews with the coaches, principals, and more. The U.S. Army, be all that you can be. Start of league play across North Carolina here in the 4A Metro Conference, right in the heart of Greensboro. It's Grimsley, number one team in the state, up big over Southeast Guilford, the league rival. Newly added to 4A in the last four years. And Faison Brandon back to work. Brandon, all the time in the world, elects to run. He's tripped and gains four. The tackle there from Brian Bellerand. So now you see what that two-minute drill looks like. They're close to midfield, so they don't have to move quite as fast. But you've got to get up and get back to the line of scrimmage to run another play if you're not going to call a timeout. A good test for Jesse Tripp's offense, the fifth-year OC. Pressure on second down and a completion. Cato gets out of bounds to the 40, and he gains 17. Basic route concept, but a good one at the top of the screen there. Both receivers looked like they were running go routes the whole way down the field. But Coteau stops, puts on the brakes, comes back to the football. Good concept, good execution by Grimsley. And he gets out of bounds. Yep. The clock stops with 59 seconds. Grimsley executing a two-minute drill here, emulating a playoff push. Brandon takes a deep shot. One six through the hands of battle, the one-hand extension. That was a really good throw. It sure was. And Battle, the intended receiver, he missed one in the first quarter for six. Just a little over his head that time, just over the outstretched arm. First interception of the year for Brandon. And he's been handing the ball off perfectly. Five rushing scores along with a safety. There's Brandon on second down. Plenty of time, goes to the sticks, Coteau has it, and Caden truck sticks his way out of bounds. Gain of 13. How about that? Little finishing on the end of that catch, get up field, don't just get out of bounds, get a couple extra yards and help your cause. Comes back to the football, puts both hands, covers it up, plays the boom. Just like that after a couple of catches, we've got Grimsley now rolling inside the 30. Fresh set of downs. Here's Mitchell Summers. He gets a block. And Summers is now into the red zone. A busy first half for Mitchell. Who nearly runs out of the building after 15. On limited carries, no less. I mean, it's not like he's been getting a touch every other play. He's just been efficient when he's gotten the football in his hands. Mountain Fried Chicken starting defense. These guys have been tested tonight. Brian Belloran is the big name to keep an eye on. Sophomore D tackle. Not an easy assignment tonight. Nope. But it is a stout defense. This is a team that's been pretty impressive here for through the first three weeks of the season for Southeast Guilford. Nearing 200 total yards for Mitchell Summers as we get to halftime. Now 35 seconds left. Brandon, option one covered. Throws right. And I think that's a catch. It is. Kyan Battle, the touchdown. How about that? Hard to tell, but Battle brings it in for the Oxner Permar touchdown. Scooping it off the turf, pretty close. Battle almost had two touchdowns here in the first half earlier. Picks up one here. 
scraping it off the surface of the turf. Yeah, I want to see the replay there because that, that had a lot of ground written yeah, all over it. It did. Another missed extra point for Henry. So it's a 35 point game. So Kyan Battle does just enough here to get ruled a touchdown. You're going to see it was a low throw down the field. Brandon senses the pressure, gets out, and that's close. Yeah, let's see if this angle helps. Uh, yeah, it might, th might be the benefit of the uh, scoop yeah, no and score replay, there. Yeah. And I don't know that it hit the turf until after it got through his arms. Now, if you maintain possession when it hits the ground, right. it's a catch. Right. But hard to tell what got first, the chicken or the egg. Uh, but but give battle credit because he sold it as if it was a score. And he spun and right. hit his angle from the ref. Yep. Yeah. So good job. Sold that football. No instant replay in high school, so you got to make it look good. And it's battle's first touchdown of the year. Finally picks one up. Again, two deep shots for him here in the first half. Let's see what Couldn't you did. Up. It just gets one finally into the end zone there on his third look going deep. But again, Faison Brandon feels that pressure coming. Gets out of the way. That instinct takes over. Been very impressed just from the feel for the game that Faison Brandon has had. From the last couple times we've seen him, even to now, it's a pretty big difference. Only his first touchdown pass, but it's been an efficient first half yep. Faison. Number one recruit a quarterback in 2026. Here's a return from the four. He'll slip a tackle. Maybe another. Out past the 35 and a one-man wrecking crew. Jermaine Harris gets just inside the 40. And officially two touchdowns passing for Brandon. Okay, Mark, 12 seconds. What's in the playbook here if you're Xander Marsh? Well, you're taking a couple deep shots if, if you're trying to do anything at all. You'll see it's more about how this team is going to regroup going into halftime, searching for some of those positives and coming back out in the second half, putting something together. First-year starter who's been elusive with his legs and facing a relenting pressure, including Bryce Davis, who's standing at the line. It's a run to McLaughlin. Okay, so the clock actually didn't start on the snap, but it's moving now with eight seconds. And it looks like we're going to head to halftime here. Oh, hold on. A timeout. So one final play. Certainly gets to show off the arm strength here for Xander Marsh. No, maybe not. No, no, they're definitely going to add time back on. Yeah, they're going to refs are putting everybody back on the sideline. Yeah, certainly you're going to. I think Daryl Brown up. has the same look we all kind of do. <laughs> Just going to try to load this one up. See if Xander March can throw that thing about at least 54 yards. 53, excuse me. We're going to have one second on the clock. There's Daryl Brown. And Rebecca will touch on this in the second half, but, but a neat chance for Grimsley to actually stay in town and, and see some of their own this weekend. Yeah, exactly. Told us it was a nice, easy drive down from 85 to 421. Take 41 from the coast to the mountains. Just zip all the way across. Not bad. And right in the heart of the state are my 48 game of the week. Number one team in the state, Grimsley, in the latest 4A polls. So one final play. Here's Marsh. Let's see what the arm strength is. Davis has other plans. Marsh is running for his life. Oh, he's got a chance. Marsh heaves a prayer. Is that intercepted? No, incomplete. Elijah Ingram thinks otherwise. <laughs> and that ends the first half. Everything going way of Grimsley in the first half, but a nice touchdown drive for Southeast mixed in.
You can't ask for much more if you are that Grimsley coaching staff. You ask your players to go out there and execute, they do just that. Ingram is upset, thinking he got that. Okay, Ingram. Uh, no, that one hit the ground. Yep, yep. No beneficiary of the turf that time. Convincing, but not yep. enough. And now Rebecca down with Coach Gerald Brown. Rebecca? Well, Coach, other than that interception, it's been an offensive show here for your team, but you told us the biggest area of concern for your team this week was making sure they didn't have any sort of let up. What's your assessment so far? I think we've played pretty well. There's been some areas I'd like to see us improve in. Um, you know, just kind of just executing in all areas, special teams, we've had a couple um, blemishes, but um, other than that, we played pretty well. And you were excited about your secondary this week. What's your assessment of how they've performed and what more would you like to see from them? No, I think they've done, done fine. We've missed a couple of tackles on their touchdown drive um, on the edge, but other than that, I think we played pretty well. Thanks for your time, Coach. Thank you. Guys? Rebecca, a good first half for Grimsley. When we come back, we'll showcase our halftime report. Plenty more here from Southeast Guilford when we return. Throughout the 2024 Winston-Salem Fairgrounds Friday Night Rival season, Tatum and Atkinson Law Firm will recognize an exceptional senior student-athlete from each participating school with a plaque presentation prior to each game. This week's Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athletes are from Southeast Guilford High School, Adrian Gaylord Jr. Southeast Guilford's Adrian Gaylord Jr. is a varsity football player for the Falcons and eagerly joined his team back this season after overcoming a kidney laceration his junior year. Adrian maintains a 4.0 GPA and is on the National Honor Society. He is also a student ambassador for Southeast Guilford where he's involved in other community activities such as charities for the ill. And from Grimsley High School, Elijah Ingram. Grimsley's Elijah Ingram is a varsity football and basketball player for the Whirlies. He has helped his team to three conference championships and was named the defensive back to watch by the Greensboro News and Record. Elijah is on the National Honor Society, has been on the honor roll since kindergarten and duly enrolled at GTCC for his senior year. Adrian, Elijah, and other nominated students are also eligible to win a $5,000 scholarship to be presented at the end of the season. Congratulations to our Tatum and Atkinson Scholar Athletes of the Week. Sponsored by Tatum and Atkinson. Injured in a car wreck? Call the heavy hitters. Welcome into the U.S. Army Halftime Report. I'm Rebecca Fiorentino down here on the sidelines in Greensboro tonight. And we are now joined by the home team assistant principal, Dr. Courtney Cox, here with Southeast Guilford. Now, as your team may not winning, but what makes your student athletes so special? 
Keyword right there was student athletes. Our student athletes are amazing. They hit it real hard in the classroom. They are very mature. Um, they are also extremely, extremely bright everywhere that they go. They do great things. Um, just one thing about them, our student athletes, along with our whole student body, we have exceeded our expected growth here at Southeast two years in a row. So that's very exciting to let, let you know that they're hitting it hard in the classroom. Um, and even when they're not winning on the field, they're still out there, they have ambition, they have drive, and we're excited for them. We know that they're gonna continue to do great things. We can see your love on your, with the love on your face, just your smile there. And it's a beautiful Friday night here in Greensboro. We've got the marching band, we've got its camo night here for your students. What do you love most about Friday night football? Well, you can't see it on camera, but it's those kiddos over there. They are rocking it every Friday night. They come out, they come up with their own um, themes. They come up with their own chants, and they are out here rocking it. Um, and so Friday nights, it brings our community out in Southeast. You can see it comes from the babies all the way up, um, and we love it out here on Friday nights. Well, thank you for your time, Dr. Courtney Cox, the assistant principal for Southeast Guilford. Between the marching band, the student athletes, and all the students here tonight. Well, when we return, we'll talk with the principal for Grimsley. Stay with us here. Plenty more to come from Greensboro. Welcome back to Greensboro. It's the U.S. Army Halftime Report. Be all that you can be in the U.S. Army. I'm Rebecca Russell, and now joined by Grimsley High School's principal, Jed O'Donnell. I've got some questions. Hopefully you've got some answers. The first one's a tough one. Mm -hmm. How proud are you of this team in your school? You know, it's incredible. The, the impact that foot, uh, a football team has on a school culture, uh, the positivity and the ethos is just incredible and we've been blessed in the last few years to have an amazing football program that has permeated the success throughout the school and brought pride to the entire worldly nation what is that ripple effect like not only just for your football team their fans parents but for other sports and and their fans and parents well grimsley is very lucky you know we have an excellent academic program uh, we have the International Baccalaureate Program, AP Program. We have a wonderful arts program. But our sports, we've awoken a sleeping giant, and it allows our community and the worldly nation to have uh, a pride in their school, and the, the sporting is just incredible. 
I saved the toughest question for last. We love seeing your social media and your message to your Worley Nation each day. What's your message today? I just want to say thank you. This is our 125th year as Grimsley High School. This is my seventh year as proud principal of Grimsley. We appreciate the support that we receive from Harkers Island at the beach all the way to Boone in the mountains. So thank you very much. And remember, as always, go Whirlies. That's Jed O'Donnell. I'm Rebecca Russell. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Well, earlier this week, we talked with the U.S. Army Company Commander, Marcus Brown. Let's take a look. My educational journey in the Army has been fantastic. So, uh, receiving my undergraduate degree as well as my master's. My MOS is similar to UPS. If it fits, it ships. I'm a Lotus Edition by trade. As a reservist, uh, the Army will set you apart. Um, you can learn skills and get certifications through the Army that you can use in your everyday occupation. So the healthcare perks are amazing. Uh, absolutely no co-pays, so that's no money out of your pocket. The North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services is proud to present you with this medical game plan. If you or someone you know is struggling with thoughts, emotions, or behaviors, it may be helped to talk it through with someone. There are a few questions that you can ask yourself to know if it may be helpful to reach out. For example, are you doubting yourself? Are you talking down to or badly to yourself? Are you staying away from friends and family? Are you struggling more than usual? If you answered yes to any of those questions, know that you're not alone and you don't have to struggle by yourself. The most powerful step you can take is to simply talk to someone. Talk to someone you trust and feel comfortable with. That person may be a doctor, a parent, a teacher, a school counselor, a religious leader, a relative, a coach, a neighbor, a friend, you get my idea. <laughs> there are many people out there who want to help. When you open up and reach out, help will be there for you. There are so many people who struggle with their mental well-being. It's really okay to need help, and it's okay to ask for help. We have to break the stigma and spread awareness about the importance of mental health. You have to work at your mental health, just like your physical health. If you or someone you care about feel like you are spiraling out of control or thinking about hurting yourself, please call, text, or chat 988. Someone is always there to talk, day or night. 
And we also encourage everyone to learn, know, and share the 988 Lifeline. Visit 988lifeline.org to learn even more. You can call, text, or chat 988 for free 24-7 for live support in both English and Spanish. The North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services is proud to present you with this medical game plan. We're down here on the sidelines, joined now by Lillian Craven with the Carolina Classic Fair. When is the fair, and what can we expect to see this year? We are two weeks out from the fair's opening day, October 4th through the 13th. And we've got lots of exciting entertainment. We have monster trucks on school day, which is October 7th. And we've got Dylan Scott coming to the Deer Park Grandstand, as well as Colton Dixon also in the Deer Park Grandstand. So we'll have lots of fun entertainment. And over here to your left, we've got the pretzel stacking contest. Not sure who our winner is here, but how, oh, we've got a winner here. Yes, we do, Elena, <laughs> here. How important is it to have this entertainment and I'll have a partnership with the Carolina Classic Fair and Friday Night Football? Yeah, we really love to get out in the community and meet all the high schoolers and all their families and stuff. Um, it's a really good way to engage with Winston and the surrounding area. So it's really a fun way to promote the fair and get to know everybody else. All right, we'll give them their grand prize a winner here. Congratulations. Thanks for taking the time to chat with us, Lillian. Thank you, Rebecca. That's Lillian, Lillian Craven with the Carolina Classic Fair. Well, now let's turn our attention with Coach Bates. Coach with Southeast Guilford, thanks for taking the time to chat with us. Your team was t tested here early. How have you seen your team that, that they've been tested? Well, you know, it's been a tough go the first half. Uh, what we're looking for right now is come out in the second half and and still continue to compete. We don't want to roll over, so we're looking for our guys to come out and, and still continue to play. You told us this week that your motto for this year was live for another down. What was your message at the half? Sort of the same thing. You know, it's a lot of football left in this season. You know, we you know we got to find some positive out of the rest of the night, and that's what we're looking for. Like Coach said, still a lot of football left to be played here, 42 to 7 at the half. When we return, we'll have the second half from Greensboro. Welcome back for the second half here on my 48 game of the week. Tonight's game is also being streamed live on our YouTube and Facebook page sponsored by Novant Health. Best physicians, amazing nurses, remarkable care. Start of the second half here in Southeast Guilford High School, right outside of Greensboro. Good matchup with a 4A Metro and Mark. This Grimsley program, number one team in the state, they're rolling offensively tonight. And they sure are. They were scorching in the first half. 
all those points, so much damage done. 21 points in the first quarter, 21 points in the second quarter. They were outstanding offensively and defensively in the first half. So now Southeast Guilford gets the football to begin the third quarter. And a great kick that dies in the end zone. Talented boot from Chase Palmental, the sophomore. Earning his name tonight. So as a coach, you go in the locker room here. What's the game plan in the second half? Your Earl Bates, your program, is in a tough spot, but how do you make the most of the second half? Well, you search for those positives, and this is one of those second halves where you go forward and think, what can we pull from this second half that we put into our game plan next week, and we showcase that to build this team back up. Obviously, you're down 35 at home, but you had a tough opponent. You knew coming in this game it was going to be a bit of a challenge. So now you execute in the second half, put some good stuff on film, and then you can go into Monday showing these kids, hey, we finished on a high note. Let's get back after it. Xander Marsh, a touchdown drive in the second quarter. That was the bright spot here to start the third. And a good hole for Tariq McLaughlin. He'll get seven. Utilizing more of that running game, that's so important for Southeast Guild. It sure is, and we have not heard enough or haven't called Tyreek McLaughlin's name enough here this evening. He is paramount for the success of this team. True bell cow can tote the rock, very quick, sudden, explosive, but powerful, runs behind those shoulder pads as well. Tariq in the first half, he had 30 yards on the ground, not a huge half of offense. But a half where they spent a lot of the time trying to put the ball in the air and play catch up. Here's second and short for Southeast. Back to McLaughlin, hard punishing run. He'll take the tackler with him, Chris Young. Now that level of lowering the pads, playing physical, that can translate for Southeast. So yeah, that's exactly it. You're gonna wanna come out here and execute in the second half. Again, put some good stuff on tape, give this coaching staff something to look forward to and these players something to look forward to. So when you come back in on Sunday or Monday for practice and you go through your meetings and film study, you can put that stuff out there and say, look, we did some good stuff against a really good defense. Southeast Club get ready for Northern Guilford next week. Here's McLaughlin again on the ground. And the pile pushes forward for three yards. Another good solid run. This offensive line moving a little bit, clearing some of those bodies out of the way. And this is still Grimsley starting defense. The carry Colberry, the starting detackling on the stop. He's not as big as that dude, 99, but. <laughs> There's certainly a lot of size on this defensive unit. A few, few are, I would believe, that uh, would match him in size. The Southeast Club has played a top 10 team in the state in Dudley, and now the number one team in Grimsley in just a month. A lot of learning two minutes into this third quarter. McLaughlin somehow got the ball and then gets spun at the sticks. They'll give him the first. And a good stop by Josiah Hussey. And that Grimsley game just got away from these Falcons. Almost tied up at halftime, but right before the half, you throw a pick six going back the other way when you're knocking on the door of catching a touchdown, or scoring a touchdown, excuse me. And that flips the script over. It's a 14-0 lead that eventually balloons into 49. But it's a team with a good core, good solid players, certainly playmakers, and you can see that foundation. It was 21-7 here tonight as well. Yep. And then Grimsley closes out the second. Quarterback keeper, Marsh, breaks one. A nice run for seven. Now his running ability is what could carry Southeast the rest of the year. It sure is. And you can almost see it in a way where it's Lamar Jackson-esque. Just putting that foot in the ground, very sudden in the way he runs. Watch here, boom, make one guy miss and then get up the field and get those yards. Not a lot of east-west, but north-south running, being more effective as a rusher. And dual-threat quarterbacks at the college level, so sought after. Oh, FCS, Division I, you absolutely, name it. Absolutely. And his playmaking with still another year to go, I mean, that the whole full year to go, he could really make things happen. Development, development, development. He's ran the ball for 50 yards tonight. Throws it here. There's a catch for Bess. And Lamel has the first down inside the 40. Good, strong throw. Now, he's got to grow a little bit, 5'11 frame if we're talking about Xander Marsh, but you can see there, the arm strength is there, the accuracy, good solid throw. Steps into it, already talked about the running ability. There's some good stuff there. There's some good stuff, and we talked about it a little bit with Mitchell Summers. Your dimensions, not your dimensions, excuse me, your measurables, 
do make up some of what scouts covet, but if you can play football, they're going to find you and they'll put you on the field. He has three completions on this drive. That will impress the next level. Playing out of the pocket, hands off McLaughlin. That's a nice hole. And Tariq gets inside the 30. That's right at the sticks and enough for a first down. Well, what's changed here in this third quarter? They're just running the football. They've come out and been the aggressor on this drive. That offensive line is initiating contact, opening up holes. McLaughlin is hitting the holes when he runs the ball. It's been a nice drive. Back to McLaughlin. And he gets five yards a carry. It was hard to move the ball in the first half. A lot more success here in the second against the starting defense. And it seems like Grimsley isn't bringing as much extra pressure on this drive so far. It's only been three or four guys up around the line of scrimmage. Not a whole lot of bodies floating up there right now. They're coming for depth, and that's giving the Southeast Guilford offense more room to run with. This O-line anchored by Channing Atkins, the junior center. Jason Scott, the junior right guard. They've made a lot of movement. Now a fullback comes in. Here's a blitz. And no room for Ian McKinnon. That time the defense amps up. Eight guys right there in the box, and eight guys came on the blitz. Hard to run against. That's a numbers game right there. Grimsley smart makes the play. You can't really do that. Milner and the gang got in on that one around the line of scrimmage. I don't care how many tackles you break. That's just to get back to the line of scrimmage, and then there's five other guys right there. This Worley defense, they're flying to the football. I expect to see some pressure here on third down as well. It's that Baltimore Ravens style under Ben McDonald that's been so successful with Michigan, now with USC, the Ravens, of course. Grimsley bringing that blitzing defense, and here it is again. Good QB scramble. Marsh can't get out of it, so a fourth down coming up. Is this defense causing havoc, Mark? It sure is. Didn't allow him any room to work with. Tried to shift through the pocket that time, broke a couple of tackles, and almost found daylight. But the Whirlies are there to clean up on the back end. So credit them on their pursuit to finish this playoff. Only one yard gain for Marsh that time. Felt like it was about to be a lot more. And you see Joe Rigsby amping up the pressure after three first downs. Here's the first fourth down for Southeast Guilford today. There's fourth and four. Marsh moving. Quick pass. There's a catch. And a first down for Eric Gladney into the red zone. No pressure from Grimsley. Only four guys rushing that time. And I Helga was coming off the backside of that play. But Marsh rolls out to the right away from that pressure, allows him time to step up, make a strong throw down the field. Gladney's second catch of the game. Good job moving the sticks. Just outside the 10, it's first down. McKinnon gets a yard. Not much room there for the senior fullback. Just think about like what a drive like this would have done in the first half for this offense. We're talking about a drive that's now almost going on seven minutes. And they're running the football down the field, getting those nice, efficient passes, picking up third downs. This is what you needed in the first half of your Southeast Guilford. But they're putting it together now. They're getting some of that confidence back. This is the Cook Reynolds red zone. The Falcons trying to replicate what we saw on Monday night. Big comeback win over the Eagles. And here's some movement before the snap. That was Kirk Cousins, just 10 yards at a time, dinking and dunking all night, and then the Falcons got the win. Something tells me this is going to be a little bit more difficult than that. Just a little bit. So we have an encroachment coming here, inching closer. But the principle is that they're having a nice drive when they need to have a nice drive. Get some of that confidence back. Putting good stuff on film so when you see it again, Again, on Sunday or Monday, you can go back and say, hey, we had a nice drive, built some offense, built some confidence on that. And here's the Falcons in. now at the five-yard line moving the football. Yep. And they've got another tough matchup next week against Northern Guilford. So it's second and goal, opening drive of this second half. Marsh, little boot, three men pressure, and he's forced to throw it out of bounds. I think of all the things that we've seen tonight from Xander Marsh. His ability to sense the pressure and just get the football away and out of bounds and out of harm's way, don't not taking sacks, not throwing the ball into coverage and giving it up for grabs for interceptions. That's been the most impressive thing because that's an understanding of the game knowing, hey, 
We don't have to get it all back at once. Throw it out of bounds and pick it up on the next down. Marsh is playing through some pain right now. He yeah. took a hard hit to that left arm. I mean, there were several times in the first half where he was getting molly -whopped on the field. That's a new one. molly -whopped. I like that. Add to the dictionary tonight <laughs> here at Southeast Guilford. Marsh with pressure. That pass is tipped and incomplete. Sets up fourth and goal. Coverage there from E.J. Davis. Tough inside. Slant. Favorite route. And it almost looked I think like Davis got his hand on yeah. that. Yeah, I don't think he tipped it necessarily. No. But the ball hawk in the secondary. And, okay. Offense is staying out. Well, I guess you figure you're. No, they are going to kick it. So Jackson Kinderman. He's made both his field goals this year. True freshman. This is a chance to get a second half score. But first, a whistle. There's a flag. And that delay a game will back it up five more. You do wonder. Sometimes kicking so close to the goal line, it's a little harder from an angle standpoint. Now you've played some billiards. Yeah, you yeah. got to give yourself a little angle there. So this time, you give yourself a little more room. It's not nearly as much of an angle. Turns it more into a 28-yard kick. True freshman looks to get his club on the board. And he does not, just a bit short. And a productive drive comes up a bit short. We'll take the timeout. Southeast Guilford unable to score. Grimsley back to work next. Close captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Caring Hands. Caring Hands Home Health, hands-on, compassionate care around the clock. You talk about a bend, but don't break defense. Grimsley watches Southeast Guilford march down the field for 80 yards and hold them to a field goal try. Just earned a miss as well. So now defensively, you get it back to your offense, up 35. And now you got some time for Grimsley also to work on some stuff here in the second half. There's Faison Brandon handing it off. Mitchell Summers taking defenders and he actually gets to the sticks a first down mark he was tackled five yards before the end of that run i don't know if it's the 22 i'm not exactly sure but he reminds me so much of doug mark just running the football down the field dragging defenders with him had a great career with the tampa Bay bucks among others sure. in the nfl 10-year veteran muscle hamster summers who's nearing 80 career touchdowns anchors this offense and Coteau, who's a great little slot threat, gets hit hard after the first. He'll move to the 36. Uh-oh. Caden's slow to get up. OK, good news. He's back. Good executing. Good blocking again on the edge. Summers does enough to get Coteau out there. Good hit by Josh Williams Hatton. He's not the speed of Terrell Anderson or the size of Alex Taylor, but his nifty ability here for Grimsley. A very crafty receiver out on the edge. Those two receivers at both NC State and Duke. Anderson making plays for the Wolfpack this yeah. week. Yeah. And here are the fresh faces for Grimsley. Seven starters on offense with Division I offers. Oddly, not this kid, Mitchell Summers, who's <laughs> bound to get signed. Because, Mark, you watch this guy run the football. Uh, he runs the football. I know he's a little short, but he is a machine uh, in the backfield. He runs the football. 
I mean, he is a he's a bell cow, a five six bell cow, just looking churning through those defenders. If you want a running back and he's going to run and everything that you want within that package from the RB position, Mitchell Summers is your guy. 200 yards short of 5,000 career yards. This is a state dominated by Todd Gurley all time yep. at Tarboro, but here's the next generation of great running backs in Mitchell Summers who gets the football, has a first, and he'll gain a quick 10 right there. Well, and, and that's to your point because it hasn't just been Todd Gurley. I mean, there's been Todd Gurley. You talked about KP Parks early in broadcast, Zamir White as well. So this state has seen some really good running backs come through the ranks. Mitchell Summers, you're going to have to start talking about him at least at the high school level of putting him amongst those names in that conversation. Summers can crack the top 10 in all time career touchdowns at Grimsley as early as next week. Stay tuned in the fourth quarter. We'll have our Linder Turf and Tractor scoring summary. Get a great deal in your next Kubota at Linder Turf and Tractor. That's a man moving some grass. Mitchell Summers. Here's a deep shot. Wants six. What a catch! Inside the 10, and the train keeps moving. That's a new receiver, Hudson Cooper, with the grab. Cooper's been out there laying some blocks on some of these screens. Now gets a chance to shine down the field and comes back. Extends over the defender. What a catch. How about that? Locate the football and go get it. Climb the ladder. That's a second half star here in the red zone, the Cook Reynolds red zone. Back to the ground. Guess who? Summers. And he gets wrapped up after a short game. Coming up, we'll have our Carolina Classic Fair player of the game, the Carolina Classic Fair. 10 days of awesome and 10 days of pretzels. Oof. And everything else that they have in the fair. And coming up in the fourth quarter are my 48 play of the game. My 48 sports, your home for local sports. A lot happening right there, but here's Grimsley moving the football. Explosive plays from Brandon, big running from his man Summers. Stop us if you've heard it before. It's Summers' turn. Summers gets a block, and the night continues. Mitchell Summers, he has scored six in his career before. Well, he's adding to his totals. Oxner and Permar touchdown. Easy again for his fifth touchdown of the night. And what else can you say about the young man? But really, that time, almost more of his offensive line. They create that path for him to glide into the end zone again for his fifth time this evening. Four rushing, one receiving for Mitchell Summers. Let's see if the extra point game's gotten a little better. Oh, there's a bullet. Good kick from Jackson Henry. 150 plus on the ground and now with a 42 point game. When we come back, we'll see more of this Grimsley offense when we return to Southeast Guilford. Thanks for joining us here. Grimsley and Southeast Guilford with Rebecca Russell, Mark. Fi oh my gosh. Mark Colbert. I almost said Mark Fiorentino. My apologies. I have a sister? That's Rebecca's maiden name. <laughs> I'm Evan Budrovich. A uh, fun night here at Southeast Guilford. Our director, Drew, said I can make three mistakes tonight, so that's two. I have one more to work with in this quarter plus. <laughs> Not many mistakes for Grimsley tonight, though, huh? Now, Maybe Grimsley with a five touchdown night for Mitchell Summers, one shy of his career best. Pretty impressive. And Southeast, really good drive at that third quarter. Yeah. That stalled inside the 10, forced to kick a field goal and came up short. Chase Lamentel, the kicker, debuted it away. He's had three touchbacks and now one out of bounds. 
He's had a wedgied punt that landed at the one. He's kind of done everything. I still can't believe that. I, the way that that kickoff just died short of the goal line was unreal. Man, oh, man, oh, man. So good field position here for Southeast Guilford. It's the best start for the program since 2018-19, and that was back in 3A football. We've seen flashes, especially with Marsh making plays offensively. Yeah. It's been there. Again, the, the foundation of this team is certainly there. When you return as many players as what Southeast Guilford does, you're going to find yourself in situations that are going to be advantageous for you. Now, tonight hasn't been one of them, but they ran into a buzzsaw this evening. But against other teams, they're going to have a chance to make some noise. Certainly once the playoffs come, they're going to be someone you don't want to see. Started the drive here in the third, and McLaughlin's had a really nice drive. Good gain of five on first down. Those are going to be the guys in the backfield. It's going to be number nine. It's going to be number 10. It's got to be McLaughlin. Tariq McLaughlin, and now he runs the football well. He has a great impression yeah. of Earl Bates. And we were talking about it this week. <laughs> he tries to, it's kind of the fun mockery, kind of the old Nick Saban jokes. You see Alabama players impersonate Nick. It's the same thing with Tariq and his coach, Coach Earl, whose son, Braylon, will see throughout the game at receiver. Back to McLaughlin. There's a first down, and he's all the way near midfield. And the clock will continue to run here with the 42-point score. These are the building blocks for what this team can do. Building on running the football, getting that ground game going, and then allowing your passing game to build off of that. Short way to say it, run to pass. That's where they've got to be. It's got to be McLaughlin. It's got to be Marsh running the football effectively. They will need to snap the ball one more time before the third quarter ends. Two effective drives for Southeast yeah. against the starters here in this third quarter. We'll see how that rolls on the fourth. Here's some misdirection. Quarterback keeper. Uh oh, Marsh has a blow. <laughs> he tried to hurdle, Ooh. and there wasn't a path. <laughs> Good stop by Ryan Debo. And that ends the third quarter. Well, I appreciate the effort of Marsh there. Yeah. We'll take the time out. A fun 12 minutes when we return. Grimsley and Southeast Guilford in this 4A rivalry matchup. Welcome back to Greensboro, Bill Slayton Field. It's 49 to seven, Grimsley over Southeast Guilford. We'd like to welcome in now the new man in charge for Grimsley High School, former Grimsley graduate yourself, Evan Fancourt. What is, how special 
at Grimsley, a place where you graduated. I'm thrilled to be back. Uh, I've always felt like it was a special place that meant a lot to me at the time. And, I, you know, my experience there was really what led me to get back, you know, like just my career in general. Like I knew I wanted to work in high schools. I knew I wanted to work in high school athletics. So it was really the place that kind of inspired me uh, to do what I've really done for my whole career. So I'm uh, absolutely thrilled to be back. And you are a former coach yourself. How bad do you want to be out there right now? And what's the transition been like to go from coach to athletic director? I've told a lot of people that the hardest thing about this job is not being able to coach. I want to get out there so bad. I want to jump in the huddles. I want to jump in the locker rooms when the guys are celebrating after wins because that's the stuff I love. And Coach Brown and the guys, they, they still let me do it. So uh, I, get, I still get a piece of it, but it is really hard because I do absolutely love it. And it's why I'm doing what I'm doing now because you still get to be, you know, I think the coaching profession is the most, uh, it's the best profession in the world. Um, I think the world of these guys and the rest of the coaching staff at Grimsley uh, and I, like I said, I just think it's the uh, one of the most important jobs out there, and uh, I think the world of it. Um, so it's fun to be around it. And that, one of those guys, Daryl Brown, the head coach currently, you used to coach underneath him. How special is that to be able to learn from him and now be re reunited at Grimsley? Yeah, it's really special. I uh, we were at Southern Guilford together, and uh, he approached me one day and asked me to help uh, coach outside linebackers, a position I never played in my life. You know, I'm like. What do you want me to do? And he said, look, man, you, I've seen you. You can coach. And he, uh, I was thrilled, and I learned so much from him. I mean, I'm a basketball coach at, at heart, and that's what I kind of always, uh, you know, that's what I did for the last nine years. But I learned so much from Coach Brown as far as, you know, even I, I carried it over to the basketball side just because he does. I, I've never seen anybody better at, you know, this level or as far as running a program and being a motivator of kids. He understands that coaching encompasses a lot more than just the X's and O's. I mean, he is so good as a mentor, as a counselor um, for, to these guys. And then he obviously is really good with the X's and O's. So I learned a lot from him uh, as far as running a program goes and carried it over to what I did uh, after that. Uh, you know, right after I coached with him, I took over at Southern Guilford and then carried it on to some other places. So it was a lot of fun to learn a lot from him. He's, he's an incredible man and coach so it's and I'm really happy to, that he's the football coach at the school on the AD at so I can tell you that makes things a lot easier well congratulations on your new role with Grimsley High School that's Evan Fancourt thanks for taking the time to chat with us today absolutely thank you guys what a neat perspective too with that relationship and, and this Grimsley program certainly developed not only into a consistent winner but now across the board in sports they've done yeah. such a great job yeah and i mean it, it speaks to you everyone over there at grimsley not just here at the coaching staff at football but across the board at all athletics i mean they've done an excellent job of building uh, not just a, a couple teams but a brand that really resonates throughout the entire state now led by daryl brown has won 175 games as a head coach in his tenure and we have a whistle before this snap if you're noticing the clock it is running here with a 42 point difference it's a high school rule 40 or more with some defensive linemen confused or sorry 42 points at the high school level but the band's still rocking and rolling tonight. they sure are every reason to do it too on that Grimsley sideline they were following the motorcycles that came in pregame both teams bands are here great atmosphere the motorcycles were amazing I got to ride one of those next time they do that at Wake Forest <laughs> The Deke. The Deke pregame will ride that bike onto the court. Here's some pressure on Marsh, and he throws that out of the way. What makes this Grimsley team dangerous? And we think state championship, they've won a title two years ago. What about this year's team? I think just the, the variety of ways they can attack you. Coming into this game, we knew that this offense was a little a little more simplistic, right? It wasn't the, the dangerous wide receivers on the outside where you've got to pick your poison that way and they're going to attack you the other. The explosive plays really hadn't been there that much through the first three weeks, but now tonight, I mean, they've had explosive plays up and down the field, so it seems like a different Grimsley team offensively. And defensively, it's, it's been what we expect. Tough, hard-nosed, 
big bodies, execution, it's all there. And Daryl Brown noted a, a little bit of a lack of toughness yeah. in playoff games last year that cost him as that pass is incomplete, it's fourth down. And I, th I think you can see there's a little more sense of urgency with this team, right? Bringing that pressure, getting home, making plays around the line of scrimmage, establishing a presence. It's not just about, well, he made big hits in that game and that's how they did it. It's about letting your opponent know that you're there. It's getting a two-minute drill up yep. 30 to execute yep. in a game like this that carries into the playoffs. And it's it's the the mindset of Daryl Brown and his coaching staff where, hey, we're really, really good, and we know we're really, really good, but you can always be better. There's never going to be a sense of perfection within that, that program. And now a timeout, so the clock will officially stop here. Second timeout for Southeast Guilford. We'll take the timeout and come back for this fourth down. We return. A fun night here at... The part of Greensboro, we got plenty more when we come back. Close captioning for tonight's game brought to you by Caring Hands. Caring Hands Home Health, hands-on, compassionate care around the clock. Number one team in the state, the Grimsley Whirlies on defense. Southeast Guilford, three good drives in the second half. Now knocking on the door, fourth down. Here's some pressure. Marsh is hit. That's a live ball and a pick. This defense continues. Interception Grimsley. Chris Young, sorry, Cassius Bostic, the interception. And Pruitt knocked it loose. Just came screaming off the edge. That pressure has been there all night long and able to turn the corner this time. And just as Marsh is about to deliver that throw down the field, Pruitt, you see him here, just comes flying off the edge. Excuse me, it wasn't Pruitt that time. That was oh, yeah, Wardlaw. Jaden Wardlaw, okay. Yeah. His first pressure of the night. And, and it's meaningful. Pick for Bostic. Gets there, affects the throw. You that have a time wounded duck out there. Catch. Yep. We've had a few of those tonight, but that one a catch. And he knew it. Clock continues to run. New quarterback in for this great offense at Grimsley. This is Caden Zellis, the JV quarterback, getting his eight quarter rule. Zellis' brother is an all CAA quarterback, Chris Zellis at Hampton. And here's the next generation, Caden, getting his varsity moment. Good chance to get some work, get some burn on. Caden's brother, Chris, he's third in the CA in passing yards right now. Derek Robertson of Monmouth there you go. has 11 touchdowns. Zealous is an all-conference preseason player. Monmouth, a great program, too. And then Caden, now the sophomore, getting his first major reps on varsity. A neat moment here in the, late in the fourth quarter. And Zealous has done a lot of that. Here's Micah Williams dancing into the moonlight, and he gets a yard or two. Great moon tonight. Yeah. Speaking of Monmouth, have you ever actually been up there? Been to Monmouth? Yeah. It's on my bucket list. It's a beautiful campus. I wonder what's on Rebecca's bucket list. Hey, Rebecca, what's going on? Hey, I'd love to go there as well. Take me on a trip, road trip. Well, I wanted to talk with uh, Michael Williams. I, t I asked Micah what he's learned from Mitchell Summers the most, and he told me his vision, being able to see the right holes, looking where to go, picking and choosing the right battles, has really helped Micah's game, and he told me it all starts in practice Monday through Thursday. If Micah has a good week in practice, Mitchell told him that will translate well in the football field on Friday nights. We're seeing him here today. And Micah told me his biggest strength is being able to just get between tackles and go uh, get those hard yards, even if it's just three yards of carrying the football. Thank you, Rebecca. Nice to see Micah get some action here in the second half. That incompletion forces fourth down. 
Bit of a high throw out to the far side that time by Zealous. Just couldn't get that football. And how about Daryl's son, Cam Brown, out there? The ball boy. There you go. The coach's son. It's all about the coaches. <laughs> they do so much around the program. And little Cam Brown doing the ball boy duties. He's got a jersey, too, number 10. Here comes the punting unit for Grimsley. First time we've said that tonight. Momentals kick a little short, but this is returnable. Options here. Oh, and a hard tackle there. That'll send us to our final break. Ryan Debo on the stop. We'll take the timeout. Final four minutes here in Southeast Guilford when we come back. League play underway on I 48. Time now for our player of the game by Carolina Classic Fair. Mitchell Summers, no surprise, five touchdowns. Uh, from start to finish, first play from scrimmage goes the distance, 75 yards on the scamper for the first touchdown pass of Faison Brandon's night, and it did not stop what they are toting. Four more on the ground, a flurry of explosive runs. Mitchell Summers, as explosive as they get, and he is our Carolina Classic Fair player of the game. Summer's now over 80 career touchdowns, and here's the new quarterback, Jermaine Harris, the senior who's a linebacker, he's a running back, he's a quarterback, and gets some action here late in the fourth. Great to see both these programs empty the benches, a lot of new faces coming in. It's all about development. You want to win games, but when you can, you've got to find ways to bring along the next generation, those next that next crop of players. Speaking of next generation, how about Drake Nance of Davie County last hmm. week? Five touchdowns, 500 yards, and Ethan Driver, his guy, 270. Davie yeah. County, they can score the football. Not bad. They got to find some consistency, though. It hasn't been there. It seems like it's either been boom or bust for them so far this year. They'll average 40 and they'll give up 40, yeah. which makes for some entertaining games. Back on the ground for McLaughlin, who's had a good second half, and he powers forward for about six yards. I know we'll see Davie County in a few weeks as well. That's the CPC where tonight Mount Tabor is about to move into first place. They're going to beat West Forsyth here in a minute. Unreal conference. CPC, Mount Tabor, West Forsyth, East Forsyth, Reagan. Right now in the playoff projections, East is the four seed in 4A. Grimsley's the one. That, that is a fantastic semifinal match. Yeah. When I mean, you think about how good East Forsyth is yet again this year, what that means if they're the four seed. You put that game on my 48, and I'm watching. Oh, that's for sure. And he's back on the ground to McLaughlin. He's able to get the first and move the chains. And if you're Southeast Guilford, there's still a lot to play for here. League play just underway. Northern Guilford, Ragsdale the next two weeks. How do you carry this forward if you're southeast in the league play? Well, you see, again, here in the second half, they were able to string some drives together. No points to show for it, but they were able to move the football against a very good Grimsley defense at times. Now it's just finishing those drives and getting points on the board. Nearing midfield as we hit the two-minute mark of the second final quarter, second half. Oh, here's a good run. And then Harris dragging defenders literally. And he took the linebacker with him for a first down. That was Ramir Harris Dupree on the stop. How about that? Good solid run. Good hole by this offensive line. Good read as well to get up and through. Good strong run and finished it by getting <laughs> now a Now that yards. is how you run through a tag. Yeah. If you just drag yourself through it on the middle <laughs> tractor first down, making tall grass short. But that's that's got to be the point of emphasis going into next week. Again, against a very tough opponent next week, too, with Northern Guilford showing up. Northern Guilford beating Ragsdale right now by a couple of scores. Back on the ground, and McLaughlin will lose yardage. That's good pursuit. 
from the interception man, Cassius Bostic. So Grimsley will leave here at 4-0. Northern Guilford will come in next week at 4-0. So pretty meaty part of the schedule right now if you are Southeast Guilford. And you'll get Ragsdale on the road and Southwest Guilford after them. So it does get a little bit easier after tonight and next week. And well, next week's the halfway point yeah. of the season already. And, and we're going to find out, keep a close eye on this score here from Southeast Guilford next week because it's going to show a lot of who this team is. This is the opening game of conference here at the 4A level. Jermaine Harris, the backup QB, breaks a tackle. And he gets hit hard in the secondary. These quarterbacks are good runners. Aren't they? That tackle from Ty Shoemaker, and you're right, between Harris and Marsh, that's a dynamic running game. Yeah, I mean, they can run the football. It's almost like the offense may not miss a beat if one of them were to have to miss some time. Head coach and OC Earl Bates looks like one more play in the running here for Southeast Guilford. And Grimsley about to win its 30th straight league game, dating back almost six full years. Could be the final play of the night. And it's a run for Harris. That tag team tackle wraps up the evening. And the Grimsley Whirlies, number one team in the state, flexing their muscle. Mitchell Summers, a solid five touchdown night in a dominant league opening win. It's a fantastic game here for Grimsley tonight. Flex their muscle on the way to a perfect 4-0 and record. Are my 48 play of the game, Mitchell Summers, play one, 75 yards later. Just an explosive play down the field, great play to start the game. It really showed off the ability of this Grimsley offense to get everything rolling right off the bat. Explosive play, set the tone for the rest of the night. How about our my 48 scoring summary all over the field? A lot of offense for this Grimsley Whirly team. And Rebecca Russell has more with the winning club. Coach, you leave here today 4-0. What are you most proud of of the guys standing around you here today? Now we had a great week of preparation. I played really well to start out tonight. Um, there's always some things that we want to get better at. Um, there's always going to be the case, but um, the goal is to win. We came here and we found a way to do that. How does this win set the tone for the rest of conference play, getting your first league play? First league win today. I mean, getting a win in conference plays huge, especially on the road. Um, we got six more tough ones coming up in the Metro, so I got to go back to work on Monday. And how about this guy next to you? Eight career touchdowns tonight. He had five. Woo! 
I know these guys are excited to see that number. What can you say about the way he plays and what he puts on display each and every night? No, I can't say enough good things about him. I mean, he's a great football player, um, tough kid, works hard, but um, he'll give a lot of praise to his offensive line and the guys around him, his quarterback and stuff. But um, it's always a team effort for us, but um, Mitch is a great football player. Well, guys, you get the win here tonight. How would you like to celebrate? I love to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Here's your trophy. It's the Friday Night Rivals Grimsley versus Southeast Guilford. They get the win here tonight. Guys. Trophy presentations are always fun. We want to take a moment to thank our sponsors. Capital Metals for that trophy, of course, in High Point. Cook Reynolds for those high-end zone views and Mountain Fried Chicken for the crew meal. And Mark, Patriot Pretzel Company for the pretzels at halftime. A fun little treat there for the pretzel stacking. Yeah, man. And finally, to our high schools and their admin for your support of the Kona Classic Fair Friday Night Rivals broadcast. Grimsley moves to 4 0, number one team in the state, keeps on churn, and Southeast Guilford continues league play next week. Next week, we're going to head a little more west, and we're going to head to the Reagan Raiders visiting the Glen Bobcats coming up right here on My 48 Sports next Friday, 27th. Continuing a great month of high school football. It was revving engines all night. Mitchell Summers, five scores. He was fantastic. And this Grimsley Club proving why they're one of the best teams in the state. Wrapping up a league opening win. For Drew DeMarcantonio, our director, Lori Bates, our producer, everybody involved. Rebecca Russell, Mark Covert, and I'm Evan Budrovich saying good night from Southeast Guilford. A dominant win for Grimsley. This is a presentation of My48 Sports and My48 TV. Have a good night, everybody.